Good Monday morning. The sun's shining. It's still kind of wet. I was in the middle of servicing the 5115 when they showed up with my new disc. So I will show you that. But I've had people ask, you know, for a equipment tour. So I will do a spring work equipment tour. That way the new disc will be incorporated. So as I like to say, I bought two because Great Plains is owned by Kubota. So I bought two Kubota sweatshirts, a couple of Great Plains hats and koozies and got a free disc. Yeah, the only problem is the gray sweatshirt, which I actually would wear because I like gray, is a large, so it probably ain't going to fit me. The orange one is an extra large. So that will fit me, so I guess that'll be a hunting sweatshirt or something, because orange. But anyways, the gray one the wife can have. The kid will want the koozies. Yeah, she wears them as gloves. Don't ask. Anyways, let's do it this way. Let's start with the order in which we plant. Yeah, pick, pick the camera up a little so they're not, you know, looking from the ground up. So the first thing we do on last year's bean stubble is we take the 8295 and we chisel plow. And then the 5115, which is sitting over there because I was in the middle of servicing it, usually has the bucket on it at that time, gets hooked onto the rock picker and we pick rock. Then the 8235R sitting over there gets hooked onto the Field cultivator, which I don't have out yet because I haven't got everything out yet. I was actually in the process of, I got the rock picker out, the tractor was warm, so I dropped the oil. So I still got to get the field cultivator out, sprayer, all that good stuff. But so we chisel plow, then we pick some stone, then we hit it with the 25 foot 6 inch soil management system yeah fancy names huh the john deere field cultivator and then after we do that and the ground's nice and smooth we go in and plant corn i gotta walk back up here with my kinsey 3500 eight row corn planter yes for you new people this rotates to the set like this with the wheels. You'll see all that when we get going or go back to last year. It's pulled with the 7230. That's what I plant with. Like I showed the other day, I got very little seed in. I got some Pioneer corn, pallet and a half. And I got two Pioneer Pro boxes of soybeans. So, we chisel plow, we pick stones, we field cultivate, then we plant. And when the corn is, oh, six to eight inches tall, roughly, I go in and spray. My Hardy Ranger 2000 sprayer, 600 gallon tank, 60 foot booms. Spray the corn for the, or spray the weeds. All right, then after that, when the corn is anywhere it's from you know, shin high to knee high. I go in and put my anhydrous on. That's my ancient anhydrous applicator, but you know what? It works eight rows at a time. And that's pretty much it for corn. All right, so then soybeans. There's my seed tender that we put the soybean boxes on. That's obviously got to get dug out of here too. So when it comes time to plant soybeans, the 8295 comes off of the chisel plow because all we do is one pass the corn stubble like this field right here and we hit it with the one pass high speed disc which last year was the pottinger this year is the great plains so here is the new disc that they just delivered so very similar to my pottinger you know as far as setting your depths and all that kind of stuff little bit different this has got front wheels guide wheels where my pottinger didn't my pottinger raised and lowered on the crumbler 
And boy, this is one hell of a meaty crumbler, let me tell you. Whew. Where this one raises, actually raises and lowers on the tires, which I kind of like that better. Because when you're turning sharp at the ends of the fields, on the Pottinger, it was putting a lot of pressure on the bearings in the crumbler, in my opinion. <coughs> so the 8295 goes on that. And we disc corn stalks. All right. Yes, those are sitting out because I had to get them out and get other things out. Barb will go through and pick whatever stones she can see on top of the corn stubble. Then after we disc, if there's any that need to be picked, she goes back and picks again. So then the 8235 gets put on the 1590 grain drill. Yes, I used to drill with the 7230. I didn't lack for power because we put a chip in that. That's putting out considerably more than what you know stock it's 135 it's putting out like 165 170 i lack for traction because when you fill this drill up well those pro boxes right there are 40 units 40 bags you know like the small corn bags so that would be 40 140,000 seed bags in those pro boxes and that 1590 drill will hold about 60 of those smaller bags. So it'll hold, you know, one and a third of those boxes, roughly. Somewhere in that neighborhood. The Kraus 4400 color packer gets hooked to the back of the drill. I had a guy, a fabricator guy, make me a hitch for it. I don't know how many years ago. A lot, because this drill is a 2013, I think. So that hooks right onto the back of it. So we're color packing. That's my water wagon that sits over by the barn where I fill my water up with the garden hose during spray season. So after picking some stones, one pass tillage with the high speed disc, we go right in and drill. And then obviously the sprayer gets used on the beans when we get done spraying corn and we spray beans so that's the spring tillage equipment oh and the 6420s job during the spring it's on the sprayer and plus it's on the fertilizer wagon which i'm not going to walk over to the other shed but across the road the other shed i got a bruns 400 bushel with an auger with the the uh, stainless steel flighting in it for fertilizer that is sitting in that shed over there. That wagon holds about 15 ton. And that's what we pull, or we pull that around with the 6420 in the spring when we're planting corn. So I used to do my fertilizer with a truck, but now it's easier with the tractor because I can take that tractor wherever I want, out into the fields and whatnot. So that's basically a tour of spring equipment. So as far as tractors, I've showed them all to you. Got the 6420, the 8235R, the 8295R, 5115M, which has got the loader on it. It's got forks on it at the moment because they're supposed to bring the, uh, one of the, I got seed from three companies. I don't know if all the other two are gonna bring this week, but the one said they definitely were, so that's why I'm leaving the forks on. And then the 7230, which sits here, hooked onto the planter, because I have to leave it hooked on for now, because I gotta pull the planter out when they are coming with seed. So it's kind of a pain in the nuts until all the seed gets here. And I can actually unhook from that so I can service this tractor and whatnot, so. I'm in the process of servicing this. I got the oil drain, the new filter on. There's a jug. I think I put one. Yes, I did. I put one gallon of oil in it so far. So I got to finish this job. And then we'll see what we're doing. And just to clarify, like on these seeds, you know, it tells you the, like these are 2,533 seeds per pound. So when I say... Yes, I have to walk through. I gotta get this thing out of here, make it easier to walk. So basically that'll hold, it'll hold 60 depending on the seed size, but it'll definitely hold between 50 and 60 small bags. So it'll hold 
Well, let's just make, let's just say between one and a quarter and one and a half of one of those. So, which generally I just dump one in. You'll see all that, how the seed tender works this spring and whatnot. Going back out here to the disc just for a minute. So those of you who've been following me know that this was supposed to be here in January and it didn't show up because, well, they hit a bridge yeah so this is a new new one this is the second new one because i told him i wasn't going to take the first new one and i've looked it over pretty closely i checked the you know sticker on it and all that with the serial number and not that i don't trust people but just wanted to make sure that this wasn't the wrecked one that was fixed and it does not look it so and the serial number matches what the new one's supposed to be but so they'll come out when it comes time to use this and go through it with me and help me get it set up and whatnot and i probably won't play with it until that time because well it'll just be easier to do it and it'll get parked down there once we do play with it for the first time where the old one was obviously i'm not leaving it parked right here and the ground's a little soft because i put a couple blocks underneath the two jacks there and yeah well the wood one broke and the cement one kind of disappeared so yeah we're not running to the fields it's wet but so like i said that's that's the spring tour so as far as spring equipment goes you'll see the fall equipment for harvest when we get to that I just figure there's no sense in showing you everything now, especially with stuff still packed away the way it is in here. But I gotta get, I gotta finish untetrising things. I got a few little things to do to that. I know I got a broken uh, grease fitting on that. I noticed last fall when I was greasing it to put it away because I try to grease everything after I wash it. Field cultivator is good, other than it's got some of the sweeps that need to be changed before we head out to the field with it. The seven inch sweeps that I use here. You know, like you can see that one up there is getting pretty war. We got down to the end last spring and didn't have any left. So we were like, all right, let's just try and get finished. And we did. None of them are war, war, you know horribly but there's some that are wore pretty good don't really have anything to do to this other than get it out put new tires on it here i don't remember if it was last year or the year before because they were pretty weather checked but so all right now that i clarified that i am going to go back to finishing servicing that tractor i have a meeting tonight so i don't know how much more i'm gonna do today as far as servicing it's i don't know what time it is 1 30 now or whatever i might be able to get another tractor service before i have to go get cleaned up for my meeting but yeah and then i'll take over our our new Kubota and great plains swag tell the wife she's got a nice gray sweatshirt seeing as it won't fit me because i just tried it well i got it on but it didn't look pretty yeah it was kind of snug on the fatness here so that one will be hers the orange one i guess i'll just wear hunting or something because orange <laughs> so michael brass you should be happy Kubota. i have Kubota gear yeah he made me and no it's not up here michael but those are my stickers that mad moose makes so smart ass michael brash had them make the same sticker but with an orange Kubota tractor. And then he sent it to me. I'm not putting that on there. I'm just not. I'm not a Kubota man. I'm sorry. It's not my fault that Kubota bought Great Plains. Great Plains makes good equipment. So I'm not saying Kubota doesn't, but it's orange. Ugh. That's a hunting color. At least here it is. So, all right. And tomorrow, oh, just so you know, tomorrow. Unless they change their mind. Mad Moose told me to bring the 6420 over. I've been wanting to do something with this because the hood was getting in rough shape. 
It's a 2005. We peeled all the decals off and whatnot the other day when they were here, which you saw in the last video, I think. Yeah. So, I'm taking that to Mad Moose tomorrow. And Derek says, I got you. Okay. So, I'm thinking you and I are both going to see the end results for the first time together. So, all right, check out the description in the video, and you can go to Mad Moose Link where my sweatshirts, t shirts, hats, all that stuff is, plus their information, so you can get a hold of them if you want anything made. And I don't know, I mean, I'm probably not gonna, you know, film myself changing oil or anything, but we'll see what the next one, well, the next one's probably gonna be what they do to the 6420. So stay tuned.